Hi, welcome to Flightline Down Under. Today uh, we're reviewing the Tech One Palama. Um, now, the, the Hobby King double badge a lot of the Tech One planes, but interestingly, they don't do this one, which I'm surprised at because, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best thing Tech One have ever made. This is my second Palama. My first one, I just literally flew to death. Um, it was the most flown plane. It's an indoor plane and I flew it outdoor 15, 16, 18 knots. You know, I just, it was the plane I just always flew to the point where the foam literally started crumbling away because I just literally flogged it to death. Anyway, you'll see that, you'll see how it flies in the, in the next video. This one is really just showing you uh, how it goes together and some kind of standard mods that everyone I know who flies these outside does. Um, so let's just quickly run you through them. The first thing is the glue they use to glue up this fuselage is pretty crap. So if you kind of run your finger along the joints, you'll find it pops apart very easily. Uh, pull it apart, you'll, that's in one of the photos you'll see in a second. And then just run some glue inside and glue it all back up and then do the same thing underneath and then you'll find you're happy. If you don't do that, what you'll find is after a few flights you'll see these cracks opening up and you'll have to glue it up anyway. Um, okay, so we'll walk through the build, but before we do that, just some standard on flying this outdoor mods that we do. First thing is it comes with these little spoilers for indoor flying, just to slow it down on the down lines. Um, I leave them off outdoors because outdoors I've got more room, it doesn't really matter and I don't want to drag. Um, undercarriage comes with these lovely tiny wheels that are very good for landing on wooden floors in, indoors but absolutely useless for anything else so replace them with bigger ones um, as light as you can get. Uh, the other thing is the undercarriage is supposed to come through uh, back here uh, but if you do that and you're landing on grass outdoors it'll nose over every day twice on Sunday so put them about a bit a little bit further than halfway between where they're supposed to go on the leading edge. Um, a lot of the guys brace them like this just to stop them springing apart when they're landing. And the last little thing is just a little bit of carbon fibre or something there just to stop this thing worrying its way and you know widening this hole. Oh sorry, second last thing. The last thing is where it hits the fuselage, um, a little bit of extra foam just to give it a little bit of more meat. Uh, in terms of glues, the first one I was actually one of the first planes I put together and I used epoxy because that was the only glue I knew about and what happened was the epoxy went yellow in the sun and so it had these cancerous little lumps all over the place. Um, this one's put together with UHU POR with one exception. Anywhere you're gluing a bit of carbon fibre to the EPP use CA glue um, because if you use anything else eventually it'll pull out. Um, I'm not an expert on glue so I'm not completely sure why. Okay, um, that's about it really. Uh, I'll talk you through the build and you can see it fly in the next video. Okay, so here's what you get with the exception of the stuff in the bottom right hand corner which is all the other bits. I actually used an 18 amp speedy when a 12 amp one would have done, but that's just because that's what I had lying around. Okay, this is what I was talking about. That popped apart quite easily um, when I put my finger in there. So you just pop it apart, put some glue in and get it back together. So that's the cabine, the interplane struts and the tailplane, uh, just gluing the bits and pieces of carbon fiber, as I said before, with the POR glue. There's the wings. Uh, pin them down on a bit of foam with a bit of glad wrap or something to stop the glue sticking it to the foam. Just so you can get a good bond between the wing and the carbon fibre. And you can see I'm using the pins to really push the foam up against the, uh, the carbon fibre spars. Okay, the main bits and pieces go together pretty quickly. Um, when you're doing the hinging with those hinges, be careful not to get any glue in the hinges, but try and get the gaps as small as possible. If you screw it up, don't worry, just use some tape to cover it over. Okay, so now you can see the main fuselage is basically together. This is now starting to glue the uh, 
carbon fibre struts to make it all rigid. The holes for these, by the way, are already there in the wing, so just look for them and use them as a guide so you can cut the carbon fibre to length. Um, so there's the two on each wing and there's um, two under the tail plane, which you can just see there, and the undercarriage, which as we said, you just put that more forward than it's specified in the instructions. And that's just showing you the extra padding that I showed you before in the introduction to stock up the, where the undercarriage leg hits the fuselage, otherwise it'll poke through. All right, so that's the, uh, getting the heat shrink and bits of wire and stuff right uh, when you're rigging the aileron connector. That's the little extra uh, rod uh, between the landing gear to stop them springing apart uh, for the grass. That's where I held the heat gun a little bit too strongly on the heat shrink and managed to melt the wing a bit. Uh, so be a bit careful with that. You usually only need to hold it there for a couple of seconds to shrink it down. Uh, when you're doing the rudder and elevator push rods, don't forget to put those little wooden um, stay, uh, stands there so that they'll hold it rigid. So that's the um, aileron connecting rods already done. Uh, 9 gram servo for the ailerons, but you can use 5 grams for the rudder and the elevator. It's a Hobby King um, version 2 uh, 4 channel receiver that I've bound to the Eternity 9X, by the way. Okay, and that's it. Pretty much rip-rare and ready to go.